everyone, welcome back to Onshape for FTC. So in today's video, I'll be teaching sketching tools and sketching constraints. So first off, before we get into that, I'm going to be making the triangular prism that we asked you guys to make at the end of the last video. So our dimensions were a right triangle with 30 by 40 side lengths, or 3 centimeters by four centimeters but this document is in millimeters so now we're going to extrude that by 11 centimeters or 110 millimeters and this is your triangular prism uh, if I went too fast there you can pause the video and go back just to see how I did it specifically so now I'm going to be talking about sketching constraints so what is a sketch constraint? So as you can see here, this line that I make is blue, which means it's unconstrained. You don't want to see anything blue on your sketch when you're finished with it. So as you can see here, I can move this point around anywhere. I can move the line itself around anywhere and whatnot. And this means that it's unconstrained. So unconstrained sketches are really bad when you're manufacturing parts because it means that you don't know exactly where your sketches are going sketch entities are going to be since they're unconstrained a blue sketch entity means that it has more than one position to be in which is especially bad if you're manufacturing a part as final or and you cannot replace it you don't want to laser cut something and realize that your holes are in the wrong spot. So I'm going to start with the simplest sketch constraint, which is the measurement sketch or dimension rather. So as you can see, if I click on a line with the dimension tool, I can set a length to it. Additionally, I can set an angle between two lines. So if I want this to be parallel, I could just say 0 or 360. I can delete that if I want. And then I can also set distances between two sketch entities like so. So as you can see here, the line itself is black, which means that it's constrained. So I can't move the line itself around, but the points are blue, which means I can move them around. So yeah. Next up, we have the first geometric sketch constraint that I'm going to go over. So a geometric sketch constraint is one that acts between sketch entities instead of assigning values to sketch entities. So the coincident constraint is the first one that I'm going to talk about. For example, in this point, in this sketch, we can use the coincident constraint to make this point to that line. So by clicking on this point, as you can see, I have it selected and clicking on this line. This point will be on the line now. It won't ever go off the line unless it's collinear with the point, the two points before it. As you can see, this point is staying collinear with this point and this point. So the next constraint we're going to go over is the concentric constraint. So this works between two circles and two points, or it can work between one circle and one point so as you can see here it assigns them to the same center and you can they are now linked together and you can move them around freely you can also do this with points and circles like for example you can select the center of this circle or you can select the edge and the other point and now so you can select the point of this the point here as or the edge of the other circle and now they're going to be concentric now we're going to go on to the parallel constraint which sets two lines or curves as parallel so now you can just say that these are parallel and now you can just move them around as you want and they're gonna stay parallel don't forget 
even though I have a constraint applied to all of these examples, the lines are still blue, which or circles are still blue, which means they are unconstrained. Okay, so you have to have this uh, sketch entity's angle, position, as well as dimension constrained for it to be fully constrained. Okay, next we have the tangent constraint. So the tangent constraint is exactly what you think it is. It sets a line to be tangent to a circle. So if you click on this line and this circle, the circle is going to stay tangent to the line no matter where you move it. Like so. This means that no matter how far you extend the line, it's only going to intersect the circle at one point, which is great for creating smooth and clean curved edges. Next, we have the horizontal and vertical constraint. So I'm going to draw a random line here. And if I select the horizontal constraint on these points, they're going to be collinear with each other relative to the x-axis, which means they're going to be horizontal with each other. So let me delete this constraint. Now you can move this freely, but you can also use the horizontal constraint on the line itself to make it automatically parallel to the x-axis. The same applies to the vertical constraint. As you can see here, applying it to the line makes it parallel to the z or y-axis, depending on your sketch plane. And you can also use these with the two points and it will have the same effect. So next we have the perpendicular constraint. So what this does is it forces two lines to be perpendicular to each other. It's a very helpful sketch constraint when creating right angles that are not within, not parallel to the x or y axes. So as you can see this line is going to stay parallel to the other, perpendicular to the other line no matter what, even if I try to change the angle of it. So while we're still with these two lines, we can apply the equal constraint to them, which means that they'll be the same length no matter what. So as you can see here, if I try to dimension one of the lines, like so, the other line's length will change too. This means that the equal constraint has been applied to both lines and their dimensions will always be, their length dimensions will always be the same. So next up we have the midpoint constraint. Basically what this does, say we have a line that has a point coincident with another line. The midpoint constraint applies the constraint for this point to be directly attached to the midpoint of the other line. So let's say we have the midpoint constraint applied to this point, and then we select the line for it to be the midpoint of. So now, as we can see, this point is directly located in the middle of this line. No matter where we move it, it's going to be in the middle of the line, no matter how, the long, it, how long the line is. So now I'm going to go over some constraints that we don't really use in FDC. So these ones I'll be skipping over for now, such as the normal constraint, the pierce constraint, and the curvature constraint. S these aren't really used at all in FTC, and I haven't really used them either, so you should be fine without them. As for the fixed constraint, however, this is what I like to call as a bad practice constraint. So as you see here, I have a line that has no constraints on it whatsoever, no location, angle, or dimension constraints. Yet, if I put the fixed constraint on it, the line can't move at all. If I apply the fixed constraint to both points, its dimension is constrained too. This is bad practice for most manufacturable FTC parts because you don't know the exact dimensions of what you're constraining, yet you're still constraining it. The only way I would see this applicable when CADing in F for FTC is when you copy paste a group of sketch entities and you know that they've already been previously constrained. So our final constraint that we're going to go over today is this symmetric constraint. So basically this is what happens when you use a symmetric constraint. 
it's what it's the constraints that's used for mirroring so if I mirror this line as you can see here the symmetric constraint has been applied to both of them